Two of the biggest issues faced by bands and artists trying to promote their music is having too much to do while fighting to gain reach. Because you want to get your music in front of people, whether that's on radio, TV, magazines, or even Spotify playlists. Finding a specialist who knows how to get your music in front of the right people and sell it the right way to give it the best chance of success. And what better way than a music PR company, which means you can concentrate on the most important things, your music and your art, while they concentrate on their specialist area, promotion. The problem is we've all heard the horror stories from bands and artists who've used PR companies and haven't got what they want and feel like they're out of pocket by thousands and thousands of dollars with nothing to show for it. So how do you find a good PR company? In fact, what is a good PR company and what can you expect when hiring a PR specialist or a PR company to promote your music? The term PR is very vague, but if I said to you, what does a lawyer or a doctor or a vet or a chef or a florist do, you would know exactly what that meant. Whereas if I asked you, what about a PR person? What does a PRist do? The technical term coined by the PRSA, the Public Relations Society of America, reckons, Public relations is a strategic communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their publics. I have no idea what that means. PR is all about persuasion. They are trying to convince an audience about something or to do something on behalf of a client. So what you're paying for when you hire a PR person or a PR company is their time, their expertise, and their contacts. But wait, when you're thinking of hiring a PR company, what sort of PR campaign are you actually looking for? You see, there's many different types of promotion depending on the outcome that you are trying to achieve. For example, are you trying to get plays on your Spotify or are you trying to get radio promotion because that's a plugger or maybe you're trying to get into magazines like Kerrang! magazine or Hip Hop Soul magazine or Gardener's World magazine or maybe you're looking at Crisis PR because you have done something incredibly naughty. And each of these requires a different skill set, from writing press releases to storytelling, from market research through to having connections at radio stations, event management, even influencer marketing. So before looking for a PR company, you need to know what your goal is and what you are trying to achieve to find the right fit for you and your music. Now, when you hire a PR company, there's usually a slight disconnect between the client and the PR company. And that is what you want to pay for versus what you actually pay for. You want to pay for results. The problem is it's impossible to predict results because you're not dealing with advertising. You are dealing with subjectivity of you and your music but what you actually pay for is time and the level of expertise and experience of the person who's providing that time. So when is the right time to bring a PR company or specialist into the strategy to help you promote your music? Well, that is the million dollar question because here is the golden nugget of information. It is up to you to provide and facilitate that PR company into getting the results. It is not up to the PR company to wave a magic wand. So, story time. Okay, so the year was about 2006-ish and BIM was in full flow and we had hired a full-on PR team, outsourced, who were on about $3,000 a month retainer. And I remember every month we'd go in and have these meetings and they would tell us what they've done and what they've achieved. And one particular month we went in, sat down around this big table, there was no magazines, there was nothing on the table, and they proceeded to tell us that it had been a very slow month, nothing had really happened, but they had tried this, that, this, that, this, that, but nothing had taken off we'll try again next month. And I was like, oh, we've paid you 3,000 pounds for 30 days work, where's my shit? I wanna know what magazines are we in, what radio are we in, what, what TV campaigns are we trying to do? What's happened? And they just said, you haven't given us the right stories. And I was like, what do you mean you haven't given it? We're the biggest music college in the world, what are you talking about? We haven't given you the right stories. 
Anyway, we went away, dejected. I was absolutely fuming. I was like, right, let's give you some stories. A month later, we walked in that room and there was magazines all over the tables and they had the biggest grin on their face. And I sat down, I remember them going through all of these things. We were in Kerrang! magazine, we were in NME, guitarist, guitar techniques, rhythm, bassist, God rest his soul. Um, we were in uh, just a bunch of other magazines. So what had changed? Well, what had changed is in that time, we went out and made things happen. So we got a bunch of successful, famous artists to come and visit the college. We had Albert Lee come in. We had Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers come in. Um, we had Funeral for a Friend, the metal band who came in. On top of that, we broke a world record for the loudest guitar sound that had ever been created with a punk band called Gallows. We did all of that, presented to them, and it was so easy for them then to go and get a bunch of national press for us. So whose fault was it in the first place when we sat there with nothing? It was just as much our fault. We hadn't provided anything for them to get their teeth into and expected that the story would just sell itself and they had to make something out of nothing. You see, the people in PR are negotiators and in order to sell your music, it has to be sellable. And that doesn't just mean the actual music itself. It's what's around the music. Artists fall down thinking that PR companies are just there to promote the music, but that is not true. It's also who you are, what you stand for, what you've been doing, and giving them reasons and stories to be able to take this and negotiate with other people to try and spread the word. Basically, what is the angle instead of this is a good song? Usually the reason why artists feel that PR companies have failed them and they've been conned and they've wasted their money is down to a lack of communication. PR companies will take on bands and clients if they feel that they can bring them value when in reality sometimes they just can't. So should a PR company refuse to work with a band or artist if they feel they're not ready? Well sure, and probably most of them do, but hindsight makes it easy to see why something hasn't worked. So whose fault is it when it all goes wrong? Well, probably it's a mix. A PR company will take on a band if it feels that it's tried and tested experience can get some traction for that band or artist. And the artist is excited to bring on more manpower and more experience to be able to help promote their product to get more eyes on the prize. However, what you are actually dealing with is subjectivity outside of these parameters. Going to radio, going to magazines, or even going to bloggers or trying to get music on playlists. Whilst there are tried and tested ways, there is also a lot of subjectivity involved. So is it wrong for a PR company to take on a client who wants to pay for PR? Because a lot of people feel that it's the PR company's role to turn down artists who want to pay for them to do a certain job. The reality is these are businesses and experts working for paid clients. It's your job to figure out whether you're ready and also to provide the right story and facilitate the PR people to be able to get you the traction that you are looking for. But that's really, really difficult when it's your band, your music and your art. Because PR companies in this situation are damned if they do and damned if they don't. If you approach them and say, we would like to pay you to do our PR, and they say, no, you are not ready, then you're gonna say, hang on a minute, I'm the one paying you to do the job. However, if they take you on and then they fail because it's not ready, then you're gonna be angry at them because they haven't got the results that you want them to get. So this is why it's crucial to go into a PR campaign with your eyes open. It's very similar when you invest money and a financial advisor will say to you, your money can go up as well as down. And in your head, you're thinking, of course it's gonna go up. You never expect it to go down. So if it does, you become very angry, even though that was obviously gonna be part of the deal from the first place. It's up to you to ask the right questions to know what you're getting and how it will work and also what the PR specialists need from you so you can facilitate them to do the best work. For example, what are their targets? What are your targets? What is it that you are aiming for from this campaign? 
Also, who have they worked with? And even better than that, who have they worked with recently? Because getting you radio play on Radio 1 is fantastic. If you're not going to fit into that rhetoric because you are a metal band from Sweden, then you've got a problem. Or what if they've done something from 10 years ago and the music industry is changing by the day? So you need people that have worked within this sphere within the last 12 to 18 months. What is it that they need from you to facilitate? facilitate them, whether that's professional photos or your new official music video or a social media engaged audience, because you need to remember that the PR campaign fits into everything else and it isn't instead of everything else. So how much does it cost for a PR campaign? Well, firstly, I'd always recommend a campaign over a retainer because a campaign is a small amount of time to do something, whereas a retainer is ongoing month after month. And it's usually a bit more expensive than you'd think. I usually say a campaign would last for around six to 12 weeks, depending on what you are promoting. And that will probably cost somewhere in the region of $3,000 to $10,000-ish, depending on having a decent PR company at the level that you need for an emerging artist. Now, those fees don't include any ad spend. And if your PR company has decided to run some Facebook or Instagram ads for you, then you are gonna have to allocate some spend on top of that, which could be an extra $500 through to thousands of pounds, depending on what size of artist and what size of audience you are trying to reach. But for that money, there might be several specialists involved. For example, copywriting is a very different skill to graphic design, and those are different skills to event management or building an ad strategy or radio plugging. So you might need two, three, four, five specialists depending on what sort of campaign you're running. Far too many artists bring in PR too early, thinking it's going to fast track and jump the queue, when the reality is a really good PR company and a really good PR campaign can really help you with your music. But just like everything else, you have to have your house in order. These people are specialists in promotion, but they are not miracle workers. And your job is to make sure you bring the right people in at the right time and facilitate them with the right music, stories, and things that you are doing to get the most amount of reach to work together as a partnership. Done right, PR can be an absolute godsend. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of promotion for a couple of thousand you've put into a campaign. However, done wrong, you can lose your money and nothing happens and you feel conned and let down. So I wanna hear your thoughts and your best stories from any PR campaigns that you've run. But do me a favor, no naming and shaming. I'm not into that and if I see that, I'll just delete the comment. I wanna hear the really positive things that you've done which has created a stir. For example, many years ago, we froze a guitar in ice. It was a six foot block of ice with a fender stuck right in between, right in the middle of the ice. And everyone was talking about it in one of the conference centers that we went to. And we got so much press and PR just because we did something creative by freezing a block of guitar in ice. Those are the stories I wanna hear. What have you done that's creative, that's created a stir for PR? But thanks for watching. If you can do me a favor, if you can like, if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and come and be a part of this community because we're doing this every day. And if you wanna work a bit closer with me on a bit of a one-to-one -one basis, then you can join my exclusive community where all the details are down below. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow.